D, Samsung. I've used a lot of your phones. And that's not just because you release a stack of new devices every single year, but it's because in a lot of ways, you're one of the best phone manufacturers on the planet. And I've got to say, whilst I like a lot of what you do in the smartphone world, there's also a heap that's just plain confusing as well. So I'm here to present you with 10 suggestions that I think you should implement going forward. If you make these 10 changes, then I think there's a great chance you'll reclaim your seat on the throne as the number one phone manufacturer in the world. You ready, Samsung? Let's do it. So let's start by talking about the amount of applications that come pre-installed on every Samsung device, or in other words, bloatware. Now, admittedly, you've gotten a little bit better with this over the years, but you've still got a long way to go. Just take a look at this folder of pre-installed Samsung applications that came pre-installed on my S21 Ultra. I don't even know what half of these apps are for. And then there's this folder just for pre-installed Microsoft applications. And I get it, you've probably invested hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars into the development of some of these applications. But as a result, I think you've cheapened the experience of using your phones. I don't wanna to be told what apps I should have installed when I first boot up my brand new Samsung device. So don't force them on me. Perhaps a middle ground might be to give users the option to select which of these apps they want installed during the setup process. That way, the apps still get used by those who need them, but for those who don't, well, we're left with a much cleaner software experience. Now, speaking of software experience, Bixby. Bixby, Bixby, Bixby. Samsung, it's time to cut your losses and just ditch it. It's been proven time and time again how inferior it is to the competition. And the Google Assistant even comes pre-installed on your phone. So just get rid of it and divert that money somewhere else. And if you're looking for suggestions on where to divert that money, well, I suggest you put it towards the optimization of your lower end phones. You see, ever since I used and reviewed the Galaxy S20 FE at the start of this year, I've had this running theory that Samsung cuts costs with their lower end phones by using a more generic software build that hasn't been optimized on a device per device basis. And this theory was proven correct once again when I reviewed the Galaxy A52 5G recently. That and the S20 FE are phones with 120Hz displays, and the FE even housed a top of the line, at the time, Snapdragon 865 chipset inside. And yet, neither phones felt that smooth in the overall user experience, particularly when compared to their flagship brothers. And that's the thing, Samsung knows a lot of people just look at the specs when considering whether to buy a phone or not. So they spend big on specs like high-end chipsets and super fast displays, but cut costs in an area that they know people can't really test before buying. But I think that's gotta stop. Samsung, find other ways to cut costs with your cheaper phones, but please, oh please, stop cutting costs by sacrificing on the software optimization side of things. And speaking of cutting costs, one of the ways you've also been known to do this with your lower end phones is with the haptics. Seriously, with the Galaxy A52 5G that I recently reviewed, the haptics were just awful. And even with your baseline Galaxy S21, the haptics were the worst part of what was an otherwise really impressive phone. So I'd love to challenge you, Samsung, to take a note from Apple's book here by using the same high quality haptic motor that you use in your top end phones in your budget phones as well. That would be amazing. Here's another one, your in-display fingerprint sensors. You were one of the first to adopt the technology for devices that were available in the mainstream, and yet to this day, your in-display sensors still feel a fair bit slower and less reliable than what is being offered by the competition. I don't know whether it's software optimization or the fact that you largely use ultrasonic technology instead of optical, but whatever it is, you need to improve your in-display fingerprint sensors. One way you can do this is by letting us enroll more than four fingerprints in the security settings. See, to improve speed and reliability, a lot of us power users like to enroll our main finger twice. And this actually does help, but once you've enrolled your main finger twice, that only leaves room for two more fingerprints, which isn't enough. And what's worse is that you can only enroll three on your cheaper devices. Samsung, this is an easy fix, so let's do something about it. Now back to software for a bit, and I get what you're trying to do with the whole Galaxy theme store, but put simply, that doesn't offer us enough customization for the home screen. 
You spend hours scrolling through, to put it simply, a lot of lackluster icon packs, but then when you do find one that you like, you load it in only to realize that only seven of your installed applications are supported. And now your home screen looks awfully inconsistent. So what I think you should do instead is allow us to use icon packs from the Google Play Store. That one really simple change would level up the One UI launcher quite a significant amount. And I think it would probably bring a lot of naysayers over to your site simply because they can now change those awful cartoonish icons into something a lot cleaner. Actually, there are rumors of this happening with One UI 4.0 and Android 12. So fingers crossed that's true. But Samsung, if it is, then don't just leave it as general icon packs that can be applied, but also give us the freedom to customize each individual icon on an app by app basis as well. But then the quick settings panel could also do with some refining. It's been one of the major OS differences when you compare Samsung's various Android skins to stock Android or the Pixel experience. And to be blatantly obvious, the One UI quick settings panel is just downright messy. There was hope in the air that Samsung might adopt Android 12's new material use style quick settings panel, but then with the release of their first Android 12 beta, it looks like the quick settings panel hasn't even been touched. And it's a shame because this is a key part of the software that many of us interact with a lot, and yet it doesn't look great on a Samsung phone. I think another software related area that could do with some refining is your implementation of gestural navigation. Now, it's not like it's bad on Samsung phones, but I'd say it's one of the least satisfying in terms of fluidity. Just take a look at the animations here when using MIUI on the Xiaomi Mi 11. What about here with the OnePlus 9? And of course, then you've got the king of gestural navigation animations, iOS. And so compare those beautiful buttery animations to what we have here with One UI on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. It just doesn't feel as fluid. So Samsung, go to the store, buy some butter, and implement it into your gestural navigation. Okay, here's one that I've seen a lot of people talking about, battery life. Now, in my opinion, you're certainly not the worst offender when it comes to battery life, but I think the issue is when we see beefy battery specs on paper, like what we get with your phones, then we expect better than full day performance. But for most of your phones, that's not the experience that we get. Sure, with light use, for the most part, your phones will usually last to the end of the day, but that's often by the skin of their teeth with the phone sitting on about one to 2%. So in terms of battery life, I'd love to see the software side of things match the specs to where we're able to get comfortably through a full day, maybe even close to two, particularly with your high-end phones. And so finally, perhaps the least likely request we'll see granted, but I needed to mention it anyway, and that's the issue of too many phones. Samsung, put simply, you sell too many. Now, I kind of get it. You're trying to hit literally every single price point to ensure more people around the world can buy a Samsung phone. But what I think this has resulted in is a large portion of people experiencing a subpar version of Android. Because of this huge portfolio of phones, it seems like you're unable to maintain a consistent software experience across each of them. And so those buying your lower end phones are left with a less than optimal software experience that might just have them wishing they'd bought the latest iPhone instead. In my recent D1 Plus video, I had a go at them for having about seven phones in their entire phone lineup. But you, Samsung, you have a whopping 13 phones in your lineup, including the X-Cover Pro and the A02S. What even are those phones? Seriously, Samsung, if you can't handle the important job of ensuring the software experience is consistent across each of these phones, then you've got to cut back your lineup big time. And so, that's it. Samsung, those are 10 changes that if implemented across the next year or two will make serious waves within the Android community. But as always with these videos, now it's over to you lot. What did I miss? If we don't speak up, they'll never know. So let Samsung know of the changes you'd like to see down in the comments below and perhaps they'll be addressed in the future as well. Aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.